we headed off-road to the middle of nowhere that revealed itself as being a global hotbed of intrigue, having shaped environmental forces on a planetary scale for millennia, and will continue to do so thousands of years into the future. Coming from Seattle, our overland adventure started out with a long drive to an isolated desert on the Oregon-Nevada border, hoping to collect a variety of agates. On the surface, it's just some rolling hills of empty land, unless you count the sagebrush. But if we look back 16 million years, this land literally blew up as an erupting volcano ejecting a thousand times more magma than that of Mount St. Helens. We're talking about the McDermott Caldera, the remains of a supervolcano, the likes of the Yellowstone supervolcano, quite literally. Many people know that far underneath Yellowstone National Park lies the gigantic superheated area called the Yellowstone Hotspot, but that hotspot has not always been under the park. It moves. Stated more correctly, the Earth's crust moves over the top of the hotspot. 16 million years ago, Yellowstone's hotspot was under the McDermott caldera. The prehistoric volcanic conditions of McDermott brought up many minerals from the center of the Earth. Until about 1940, it was home to the Cordero Mine, the largest mercury mine in the United States. Mercury's dangerous properties led to its decreased demand. The McDermott caldera's uranium ore continued its importance. These are dangerous elements. Our navigator thought we should take a shortcut. It turned out we couldn't traverse the swamp, but we did get to see a family of ring-necked pheasants. <laughs> From McDermott, Nevada, we drove a few miles west. We left the pavement, drove a few more miles on a well-maintained dirt road, and soon arrived at the so-called McDermott Loop, a 20-mile loop of road in the northern part of the caldera on the Oregon side of the Nevada state line. You can see the cars coming from all the dust. When you're in the caldera, it's hard to recognize because it's so large. This area is mostly BLM land, with areas of leased grazing lands and some patches of mining claims, with both active and inactive mines. There are even agate mines, areas off limits to rockhounds like us, of course. That's okay, because there are many other rock-hounding locations within the McDermott Loop, not exactly of earth-shaking proportions. Our plans were to go there seeking the agates that the volcanic area produced in vast quantities, colors, and types, where you can find orange, purple, black, and white agate, blue agate, fortification blue agate, common opal, petrified wood, jasper, and nodules. There's the delightful carnival agate, too. And here's one we had to leave behind. Our adventure trips are often this combination of overlanding and rock hounding, for twice the fun. We knew the area was rugged with its rutted roads and water crossings, and our rig was well prepared and tested to handle the conditions. However, we ourselves were not prepared for the invasion of Mormon crickets that we encountered. Ugh, they were awful. There's no cell service in the caldera, even when we had our cell booster on. There is some creek water, but not safely drinkable untreated, and maybe not even then. There are no emergency services out here. We had to be on the lookout for scorpions and rattlesnakes. This is a dangerous place. So if you come, come prepared. It's the first week of July, and every once in a while the sun goes behind a cloud and it cools it down a little bit for a minute. It won't be too much more than 90 degrees. That's a bit hot, but not at all hot by desert standards. Nevertheless, we drank a lot of water. When we first arrived, 
we pulled our rig over to air down our tires for a more comfortable ride. That's when we heard a quad ATV approaching and the driver stopped to ask if we needed help. He was headed up into the caldera to round up some horses for the 4th of July rodeo. He was Nick Wilkinson. Yes, that Wilkinson. Part of a family that homesteaded in this area in 1900 and currently running over 1,200 head of cattle. As we look down this fence row, you see just a part of the hundreds of miles of fence out here. Unfortunately, a few rock hounds and others have tried to take a shortcut and actually cut the fence. It's required a lot more work on the part of the ranchers. Nick told us about people less prepared than us getting stranded out here. And despite some bad experiences with rock hounds, kindly offered water, gas, and tire repair at his oasis of sorts, a backcountry ranch house, likely the only building out here in this empty middle of nowhere. He told us the land was far from empty. He has leased a lot of this land from the BLM to graze his cattle. Grass is sparse here, and it takes up to 30 acres per cow. Over the last 30 years, he's adapted his ranching methods to help protect the endangered listed sage grouse and Nevada's state fish, the threatened Lahontan cutthroat trout, that both call this area home. That's all about the present. It turns out that ranchers and rockhounds are endangered here too. You see, lithium has been discovered in the McDermott caldera, not just a little, but a lot. There are two mines planned here, one in Nevada at Thacker Pass in the southern end of the caldera, and another in the northern end of the caldera, near where we were overlanding. These are the two largest lithium deposits in the U.S., enough to supply lithium batteries for building more than two million electric cars per year for many decades. But to get to all of that lithium, the planned open pit mines will be 300 to 400 feet deep and cover over 12 square miles. That's a lot of dirt. The local ecological impact will be devastating. The positive global environmental impact will be life-changing for generations. We feel fortunate to have visited the McDermott supervolcano and collected many colorful agates before new mining significantly changes this area. It's a tough thing to trade our unspoiled natural areas and the biodiversity it has sheltered for less carbon emissions, but with the record-breaking droughts, heat waves and heat domes, as well as wildfires and smoke, little doubt remains that the McDermott caldera will have yet another planetary-wide impact on this Earth. I'm John. And I'm Elizabeth. And we are Grey Bear Overland.